Hello, this is Dr. Sai Prashant and welcome to Epidemiology Lecture Series. To begin with the definition, it is the study of distribution and determinants of health-related states and events in populations and the application of this study to control health problems. The first area describes the distribution of health status in terms of age, sex, race, geography, etc. The second area involves explanation of patterns of distribution of a disease in terms of causal factors. One special contribution of epidemiology is its use of knowledge of the disease frequency and distribution of disease in populations. And let's see some differences between epidemiology and clinical medicine. The unit of study is a defined population in epidemiology, whereas the unit of study is a case in clinical medicine. In epidemiology, we study the disease pattern in the entire population, whereas in clinical medicine, we study the disease in the individual patient. In epidemiology, we identify the source of infection, mode of spread, future trend and control measures, whereas in clinical medicine, diagnosis, prognosis which is followed by specific treatment of the individual patient. In epidemiology, the investigator goes into the community, whereas in clinical medicine, the patient comes to the doctor and the subject matter is conceptual in epidemiology, whereas in clinical medicine, it's easily perceived. And coming to the historical background of epidemiology, it is closely linked to the history of the development of four ideas. Human disease is related to man's environment and the counting of natural phenomena may be instructive. Natural experiments can be utilized to investigate disease etiology. Under certain conditions, experiments on man can also be utilized for this purpose. Let's look into each idea briefly. Human disease is related to man's environment. So the idea of linkage between the human disease and man's environment was given by Hippocrates around 2400 years ago. So in his statement, he considered all the environmental factors like the seasons of the year, winds, qualities of the waters and the city and the rising of the sun and the directions north or south and the nature of water, whether it's saltish and unfit for cooking and also the pursuits where they're fond of drinking and eating to excess. And next, the counting of natural phenomena may be instructive. So in the first idea where the environment and human disease were considered, all the factors are just considered and they're not quantified. So this led to the introduction of quantitative methods to epidemiology by John Grant. So he analyzed the weekly bills of mortality in London during the previous decades and he noted excess of males over females among births and deaths, high infant mortality rates, seasonal variation in mortality and many other features related to births and deaths. He made pioneering effects at two basic biostatistical procedures. One is estimation of population and the other is construction of a life table. And the third one, natural experiments can be utilized to investigate disease etiology. So basically, a natural experiment is an empirical study in which individuals or clusters of individuals are exposed to the experimental and control conditions that are determined by nature or by other factors outside the control of the investigators or researchers. So one classical example is John Snow's experiment. John Snow noted that in 1849, cholera rates were particularly high in areas of London, supplied with water by the Lambeth Company and by the Southwark and Vauxhall Company, both of which drew the water from the Thames River at a point heavily polluted with sewage. Another example was linking the Blackfoot disease, peripheral vascular disease and gangrene in certain areas of Taiwan to the drinking of water from artesian rather than the shallow wells. So the below table explains the mortality from cholera in the districts of London supplied by Southwark and Vauxhall Company and by the Lambeth Company from July 8th to August 26th, 1854. So on the left side, you can see the companies Southwark and Vauxhall, Lambeth and both companies together. And if you can see on the right column where the cholera death rates per thousand population was calculated. Uh, so we can do this by just calculating the deaths from cholera. For example, in Southwark and Vauxhall, it's 844 and divided by the population supplied by that specific company, which is Southwark and Vauxhall. And the population is around 1,67,654. So when you divide 844 by 1,67,654 multiplied by thousand as we are calculating per thousand population, so we get the value around 5. So it's clearly evident that the cholera death rates per 1000 population is high in Southwark and Vauxhall compared to, compared to Lambeth company which is around 0 
Fourth, under certain conditions, experiments on man can also be utilized for this purpose. So basically, these are interventional studies or experimental studies. An interventional study tests or tries out an intervention, which can be a potential drug, a medical device, activity or any surgical procedure. And some of the well-known examples are James Lynn's trial of fresh fruit in the treatment of scurvy, Jenner's experiments with cowpox vaccination, Finlay's demonstration of the mosquito-borne nature of yellow fever, Goldberg's induction of pellagra by deficient diet, Fletcher's experiment on effect of cured rice against beriberi, and the evaluation of addition of fluoride to drinking water for the prevention of dental caries, an experiment done by US Public Health Service. So let's look into the James Lynn's experiment. So basically, uh, he took 12 patients suffering from scurvy and he divided them into two groups, each having six patients. And to one group, he has given sulfuric acid along with some spices. And to the other group, he has given two oranges and one lemon daily. And after few days, there was no improvement in those patients who took sulfuric acid and spices. But in those patients who took oranges and lemon has shown a rapid improvement. And now coming to two important terms in epidemiology, exposure and outcome. Exposure and outcome are the two key elements we measure in most epidemiological studies. Exposure is the process by which an agent comes in contact with a person or animal in such a way that they may develop the relevant outcome such as the disease. The outcome is the disease or event or health related state that we are interested in. For example, study of the effect of cigarette smoking on lung cancer. So in this example, the exposure is cigarette smoking and the outcome is lung cancer or the disease or event. And now coming to the epidemiological triad, basically it consists of three parts. One is the host, agent and environment. So we'll just see a quick example for this uh, in terms of COVID-19. So in, in COVID-19, the agent here is the SARS-CoV-2 that is uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 that is the agent and coming to the host a healthy individual or uninfected patient will become the host here and coming to the environment contaminated droplets or surfaces and along with these things there are other factors which are interfering at these interjunctions for example in between agent and host agent host interrupting factors agent and environment interrupting factors and host and environment interrupting factors and now coming to the aims of epidemiology to elucidate causal mechanism to explain local disease patterns and to describe the natural history of disease and to provide guidance in the administration of health services and coming to the role of epidemiology epidemiology has three major functions to describe patterns of health and disease within populations and to interpret these differences and to apply the results to public health practice and to evaluate the effect of health-related interventions. Thank you.